This week, the FLW Tour comes to the Smoky Mountains. Darling, it's a vast castle. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. The smallmouth spawn is on at Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes. There's a smallmouth, big smallmouth. But one angler hasn't forgotten the largemouth. I don't like brown fish. A big storm front brings heavy rain. And everybody's on edge. Son of a... Mm. I'm a wreck. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Jason Harper and welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee and the third stop on the FLW Tour. This event presented by Folgers. 140 pros and 140 co-anglers have been fishing beautiful Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes for the past two days and once again a familiar face is on top of the leaderboard. Demiki Pro Brian Thrift, fresh off his dominating victory on Lake Norman, is leading the pack coming into cut day. Today we cut the field from 140 pros down to just five while Thrift does have a two pound lead, by no means is he safe. The name of the game for most anglers has been smallmouth, but not so for Glenn Brown, who's worked his way into second place by catching largemouth every single day. As always, it's still anyone's ball game, and no doubt they're all gonna fight to the finish to see who has what it takes to make the cut. Fort Lyle's fishing kind of weird this week. They shouldn't be spawning, but they're not. Uh, there's a few left over, but most of them got picked off the first day, so. People trying to catch pre-spawn fish, it's really tough to catch big females. Fish are doing a little bit of everything right now, waiting on the water to come up. Smallmouth are what I like to catch, you know, I love it. But the problem is that they don't eat it and, and either spit it real quick or just or dive down with it. And I'm just setting the hook as hard as I can and not getting them. And that's not normal. They're hard to see anyway, they're real deep, so uh, we'll see how the day goes. After bringing in two hefty limits, Demiki Pro Brian Thrift leads Glenn Brown by two pounds, three ounces. Goodwill Pro Chad Grigsby is hard on their heels, just one pound, one ounce behind. Edwin Evers and JT Kinney are just an ounce apart in fourth and fifth place. Local pro Brandon Coulter in sixth place has a good shot at fishing tomorrow, but with seasoned pros like Clark Winlet and Jay Ellis right behind, nobody can afford to let up today. Boat number three, take the boat three. Boat number 13, take the boat 13. Take 35, take the 35. Have fun, catch lots of fish, we'll see you get way in, thank you. The area I fished in the lake is uh, it's about 35 minutes up the lake and it's uh, just a little backwater area. And uh, I, I caught them all week off of the trees and the logs, just flipping a tube on them. Begging, begging, begging. Get him, get him, get him. Boom. Now, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Whew. Cabela's pro Clark Winlet started the day in eighth place, up from 23rd after day one. He's just two pounds, seven ounces from the top five. But today, he's given up on sight fishing. Sight fishing was hard here for me. It was just hard to find very many fish. And when you rely on sight fishing, then you have nothing else going. So I, I just kind of felt like I'd be better off if I just fished. I was actually throwing a, a spinnerbait early in the morning on docks, some just going down the bank and then uh, flipping a tube and basically targeting bedding fish but not being able to see them. Cut day is make or break time for Palm Bay, Florida native JT Kenny. He's been in fifth place since day one and has no room for error today. I can't see it, but I know where it's at. I hooked, I hooked it once and got it to the boat and it got off and then I, it's bit like six or seven more times. And I just had went someplace else and let it rest for a little bit and I just, you know, just got back here trying to work on it again. 
I'm gonna try to ease up here and just make sure I'm throwing at the right spot. It's just muddied up though. I mean, it's it's hard. Coming up, two anglers buy for the same spot. If he comes up to me and tells me that I'm on his stuff, the proper etiquette in that situation is to move on. And Man, that's, that's bothering me. While another swims with the fishes. Whew. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Folgers, the best part of waking up. Chevy, every model is backed by a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. National Guard, always ready, always there. Castro, maximum sludge protection for maximum performance. Lowrance and the HDS high definition system with structure scan add-on option. And by Yamaha, reliability starts here. Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes cover almost 16,000 acres with 373 miles of shoreline. But even on a lake this size, with 150 boats all looking for the best fishing, it's inevitable that some anglers will find the same spots. I hadn't seen Jay all week. I don't know if he's just running new water or whatever. It certainly can't help. I mean, another boat in here, it's not that big of an area. I beat up on it pretty good the last two days, so another good flipper in here is not necessarily what you want. Just coming in here, it looked like Glenn Brown fishing over there back at the mouth of this creek. I don't know if he comes up to me and tells me that I'm on his stuff and I'll, I'll you know, the proper etiquette in that situation is to move on and go somewhere else and I'll do it. But this is a big old creek, you know, it's hard to fish the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's bothering me, you know, because I haven't seen him here all week. So, I mean, you'd think if he saw a camera guy in a boat, He'd uh, maybe yield a little bit, but I guess not. I ran all my water this morning that I've been catching my fish on, and I didn't get a doggone bite. So I'm kind of rolling the dice and come up here and just looking around, trying to find some better quality fish. I've had this pretty much all to myself all week. I've only seen one other boat come in, and he wasn't here long. You know, it kind of puts some pressure on you. You know, I know, I know the area, uh, the fish are in this area. And uh, I don't need him catching any of them. I need them all for myself. Brown will need those fish to catch tournament leader Brian Thrift, who's been sight fishing for smallmouth all week. I just <clears throat> found some smallmouth on the bed over there the last day of practice. That's just been going with that game plan. <laughs> there he is. Come on, baby, be 18, please. Oh yeah, 18 and a quarter. Laydowns have been very productive spots for anglers all week. Here's Chevy Pro Jay Ellis to share some of his insights on how to pick them. One of the things to always keep in mind when you're fishing a shoreline like this with a lot of different laydowns is what kind of tree you're dealing with. Hardwood trees are always better than pine trees. For some reason, bass just don't like pine trees. And I, I don't know if it's the sap they put out or what the deal is with them, but pine trees just don't seem to hold the fish. You know, cedar trees are good and any kind of hardwood tree. And the other thing about pines is it's really hard to work your bait through it without getting hung up. They're a real troublesome in that regard. The cut day is drawing to a close with the first flights due back at the landing by three o'clock. Only the top five anglers will compete tomorrow. For the rest, and for the co-anglers, the tournament ends today. Well, I've had better days. It was tough today. I think that weatherman owes me some money. The wind didn't blow at all. I was a teleco was clear, and those fish are way too smart to catch in that clear water. Chevy Pro Jay Ellis started the day just three pounds, 10 ounces out of the top five. But today, the fish just ran out on him. Kept going to new spots, finally bumped into three keepers this afternoon, but uh, just too little, too late. Jay ends up in 17th place. Another Chevy Pro veteran, Jimmy Houston, had a much better day. He's got four good ones today, worth number five. Well, I don't know, you know, I thought the limit was four. You told me that the fishing had got a little tough, and so the third day we was going to cut the limit down to four. Houston Stringer <laughs> moved him all the way up from 38th to 10th place, his best finish on the FLW Tour in more than a decade. 
As heavy as Jimmy's catch was, it wasn't the biggest catch of the day. That honor goes to Chris Martin Kovic from Liberty Township, Ohio. He's got some good ones in there. His five bass limit topped the scales at an impressive 16 and a half pounds. Great job. Heading the other way is JT Kinney, dropping one spot to sixth. He missed the cut by just one ounce. Today I found a, a stretch of smallmouth that were on the beds that I didn't know they were there. I don't, evidently nobody knows they were there because there was a bunch of them. And I was getting pretty excited and then two big cruiser yachts came by and just muddied the whole bank up and I couldn't see them anymore. So that pretty much ruined my day right there. Demiki Pro Brian Thrift brought his lightest catch of the tournament to the weigh-in. Total weight, 10 pounds. Five ounces, 46.7, second place right now for Brian Thrift. Unlike most of the field, Ocala, Florida native Glenn Brown has been targeting largemouth all week. 13 pounds, 14 ounces, give a big round of applause for your new tournament leader. Great job. I got a good opportunity to do real good in this tournament. I'm ready to go out and try it again. Brown's largemouth pattern looks hard to beat, but with less than a pound and a half lead over Thrift, Glenn can't afford to let up tomorrow. Just two and a half pounds off the lead, Chad Grigsby held on to the number three slot. But look out for the local pro, Brandon Coulter in fourth place, and Chris Baumgartner, who managed to battle his way into the cut all the way from 11th place. On the co-angler side, Spencer Sheffield, son of Ranger pro Ron Sheffield, was in the lead with just one angler left to weigh in, Kevin Hawk of Ramona, California. Spencer, are you ready? Ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's call the weight. Four pounds, two ounces, four two. Spencer Shuffle is your tournament winner. Give him a big round of applause. The Co Angler Tournament is a great way to get started as a competitive fisherman. The entry fee is lower for the co anglers, and unlike the pros, co anglers don't need to provide their own boat. Instead, they fish from the back of a pro's boat. We caught up with a few of them for a look at life on tour. Well, as a co-angler, you know, you, you never know who you're going to be fishing with, and you got to be prepared for everything. You have to carry a very large tackle and a small bag. Uh, the hardest thing about being a co-angler is actually fishing used water. When you fish behind these guys like this, uh, it's hard because they don't miss many. It makes it a hard day for a co-angler. But these guys are phenomenal at, uh, at giving you plenty of opportunities to catch these. You mess it up with that net, that, it, it can be nerve-wracking at times. co angler a lot of times has to read the pros' minds. Some people uh, want it scooped. Some people want the uh, net to be still, and they want to put it in. Dealing with the pros in the FLW, you'll learn some netting ability. They catch plenty of fish. The best thing about being a co-angler is the knowledge that you gain. I didn't really think I'd be able to learn a whole lot fishing with some of these guys. Man, I've learned a tremendous amount. The biggest thing I've learned is I'm not near as good at this sport as I thought I was. Life on tour is amazing. It's a great experience. It's, it's the life. Stressful at times, but wouldn't trade it for anything. Coming up, Glenn Brown starts to get his hopes up. Four more of them, we're gonna be way richer. While Thrift starts to lose the faith. What's wrong with you, Fro? Why are you losing them? What's up? Welcome back, everyone, to the final day of the FLW Tour. This is the third stop on Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes. After three days of difficult competition, we're down to just five anglers on the final day. Currently in the lead is Ranger Pro Glenn Brown. He's only one pound, six ounces in the lead. He was able to knock off one of the best anglers in the country right now, Demiki Pro Brian Thrift. If Thrift makes a comeback and wins here at Fort Loudon, he would be the first ever FLW Pro to win back-to-back -to -back tour events. Behind him in third place is Goodwill Pro Chad Grigsby. Knoxville Pro Brandon Coulter is in fourth place, but you can't count out Chris Baumgartner, who's in fifth. Heavy storms are forecast for today, and that could lead to some big surprises. Of course, $125,000 is on the line. No doubt all of our top five are going to be fighting right for the very end. For Knoxville pro Brandon Coulter, the weather played a key role in his choice of location. 
you know, there was a little bit of overcast this morning. So I decided to stay down the lake because over the years, one thing I've learned on this lake is if you go up in the stained water and it's an overcast day, a lot of times you get your butt handed to you. So I decided to stay down here on the low end of the lake this morning and throw a top water. These places may have got hammered, you know, the first two days. I haven't been this far down the lake, but, you know, it's our first overcast morning. So I thought maybe, oh God, that was a giant. That was a big one. I had a real nice smallmouth that looked like a four or five pounder just come up and just boil all over it and just didn't get it. You know, and that threw me off, you know, for about another hour and a half or so because, you know, you think if you get a bite like that, that, you know, wow, you know, maybe this just one wasn't going to commit. And so I probably ran a few more points than I normally would have just because of that one bite. Brian Thrift has found a spot that he's done well on in previous tournaments and he's sticking to a topwater pattern. Yesterday, I, I caught four keepers on top. Really, any top water is good for a big fish. I mean, I've caught eight pounders on little bitty prop baits that wasn't two inches long. Yeah, we got us a keeper. Keeper number one, we're on the board. Chris Baumgartner's fishing a reliable stretch of the river system 18 miles northwest of the launch area. I've got all my fish within, you know, like five miles of this area. Shad are starting to spawn in here. The bass hadn't really got in them good. I was hoping. I was hoping they'd get in them. There's fish. Ain't much, but he's a start, right? At least I won't be skunked. This time of year, you, I mean, the shad typically start spawning right after the bass do this time of year. And that's what I come in. Whoa, shit, I don't care. Yeah. Whew. I'm gonna go to the lane. Woo! <laughs> So while Thrift dries off less than two miles away, Chad Grigsby has been targeting largemouth. The first area I went to today was, uh, I just went up the river a little bit farther than what I'd been and, and fished back in the pocket. Stay on, baby. He's mine. Boom. See, the first one I caught, just fishing along, you know, fishing whatever came in front of me, and, and I saw her up in about six inches of water, and she was had a bed, and she was chasing some brim out, and then I just threw a drop shot one, one cast and caught her. We got her. <laughs> I knew I didn't have anything left on Teleco, so I had a creek in Loud, and I caught some fish on a couple years ago when we were here, and I caught a couple good ones there in practice this week. I know there's some big fish on this bank somewhere. Two. Ocala, Florida native Glenn Brown has been fishing a shallow cove about 33 miles upriver, just a few miles short of Knoxville. He's worked it since practice and so far it's held up. I have not caught one on this yet and I shook two off. I shook one off under this pine tree in practice and one under that other big clump of nasty junk over there. 
I have not caught one right here. Today would be a fine day to catch one. My wife and my mother are so excited. They drove all night long and got here this morning. There we go. Ugh. There's one left. There's one left. That's the kind that I've been catching. Now, four more of them. We're gonna be way richer. When FLW Outdoors returns, Coulter's fish get fired up. It's not bad, two on two casts. Let's keep going. And Brown's pattern starts to pay off. And they are gobbling it up. I mean, it's, whew. Welcome back to Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes and the third stop on the FLW Tour presented by Folgers. We're two hours into the competition and four of the final five have got a keeper in the live well. Only Knoxville pro Brandon Coulter is empty handed so far. All this week I've been catching fish different ways each day and uh, you know, I pulled up on some riprap today and I thought well I'll just fish the riprap on the way in I pulled out a Tennessee homemade you know plug and make a cast alongside a dock right next to the riprap and catch my first keeper. Oh yeah we got a keeper. A little guy but he'll do. Haven't caught a fish on this in three days. <laughs> you know, that's just how my week's been. Every day it seems to be something different where you can actually catch fish. Got one. That's a good one. That helps the cause. It's not bad. Two on two casts. Let's keep going. Most of the field have had to give up on the patterns they used the first three days of the competition, but Glenn Brown has stuck with the same flipping pattern he's used throughout. I'm flipping a, a Gambler four inch flipping tube and black neon chartreuse. It's, it's kind of a real heavy bulky tube and it's got a, a neat glide to it when you, when you drop it down through instead of like a jig where it just kind of falls down. When it when it falls, it kind of it glides back and forth, and it, it just draws a lot of bites. And it fishes real good, and smooth through wood. You don't have to fight it like you do a jig sometimes. It's just an awesome bait. I've won a lot of money with that bait. How'd you like that landing job? Hey, we got two. He's not a big one, but he's a little more. After my bedding fish or spawning pockets played out, I started trying to key on the shad spawn, which I noticed the shad were spawning up around the bank, and there's a bunch of shad running in the rocks and, and spawning. <laughs> I was smiling. There's a small mouth, big small mouth. I say, no, it ain't a small mouth, it's a large mouth. That's good. I thought that was a small mouth. It's black when it come out there. That little thing, that's what we're looking for, that a little bigger. Put him over here in the keeper side. Predictions were that this was going to be a big, big spawn tournament. You know, everything was going to be sight fishing. And, and there's a, a number of guys that have caught them sight fishing. But uh, I've actually found it to be more of a pre-spawn deal where I'm fishing at. They're, they're just coming in. And I, mean, I fish the same trees, just keep going around and around and around. <laughs> and I keep catching fish off of them. It's just, it's, you know, it's like the fish are just steadily funneling in here. Oof. 
Demiki Pro Brian Thrift has been throwing a topwater frog, which so far has boated him two small keepers. He's going to need bigger fish to close the lead on Glenn Brown. All right, Mr. Bass, I know you're here. Whoa, about to fall out of the boat again. It really surprised me that this spot was it was overlooked by a lot of guys. I had a little bit of company in there yesterday, but all, all I can figure is they came in there and saw, you know, their trolling motors kind of in the dirt, just kicking up mud, and uh, they may have just rode back out and just kind of discounted it. Come on. I got four now, and uh, that fish came on the same exact deal as the as three of my other ones. On these lay down logs, I'm bringing my my tube right down the side of that lay down log, and they are gobbling it up. I mean, it's whoo, man, this is awesome. I want to win this tournament so bad. When we come back. Gosh, damn, she smoked it. Grigsby hunts a fish he's been after for days. And I didn't know if she was still there. I mean, you know, I throw in there, throw in there, throw in there. They're usually a lot easier to catch than this. And for Glenn Brown, they are. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome back to the final day of competition here on Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes. Ocala, Florida native Glenn Brown started the day in first place and has gotten off to a great start. He got four by 10 o'clock. The rest of the field has been struggling. Thrift, Baumgartner, and Coulter have each caught two fish, while Chad Grigsby only has one. Gosh, damn, she did it. Gosh, damn, she smoked it. She did it twice, I missed her both times. I thought I saw her the first time. I thought she was a pretty good one. They're usually a lot easier to catch than this. Gosh, she did it again. It's, it's just real hard. You can't, you can't really see what you're, if you're on the right spot. I think I am, and then see something else. I got two. two. Big lay down right here. Gnarly, it's a bass castle. All week I've been targeting spawning smallmouth down on Teleco, and I don't really have any left, but it was supposed to be cloudy and nasty, and it was this morning, and I figured I'd have a hard time seeing them. So I decided just to come up loud and throw top water and see if we could catch us a couple doing that. You know, I'm just betting that there's some fish you know, even as shallow as these places are, that there's, you know, one fish in the back of these, you know, that might be a five pounder that just can't wait till the water comes up. You know, so, something that uh, I don't know. I came kind of attached to just fishing in Florida is, is flipping. You fish a lot of mats, and you don't fish too much wood down there, but you fish a lot of heavy cover. And you know, I just had a lot of success with a flipping stick in Florida. 
you know, I helped put myself through college, fishing a Toho and a Kissimmee chain. Just, just won a lot of money with a flipping stick. And but a lot of times when you get on the right flipping deal, it's, it's the deal to win. I mean, it's, it's my go-to thing. 13 miles downriver from Brown, Chris Baumgartner is working a topwater pattern with a white wake bait. Good fish. Oh, he's barely hooked. Let me get your head up. There we go. Brian's bees, wake bait. It working. Maybe getting ready to get hot. With the day already half over, Glenn Brown has only got four fish in the live well. I missed that fish yesterday. Man, awesome. Oh man, I'm a wreck. Who needs drugs? Ooh, that'll, that'll get you fired up. That'll get you fired up. <sighs> Domeki Pro Brian Thrift has been struggling to get his fish fired up. He's only got three small keepers on board, and there's less than three hours left to fish. I guess the main reason I stuck with the frog all day was because I was getting so many bites and I just I had the confidence just to keep throwing it that you know maybe I'll get that one good bite that I need. What is wrong with you frog? Why are you losing them? What's up? After the break, Grigsby gets hot in the final hours of the competition. And Brown continues to whack them. Ooh. That'll leave a mark. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Ranger, still building legends one at a time. Chevy Silverado Sweepstakes, meet the heavier duty, heavy duty. The new 2011 Chevy Silverado has been improved in all the places that matter, and it could be yours to win. Go to winasilveradohd.com for your chance to win. Goodwill, donate, shop, and support your local Goodwill. Lawrence and the HDS High Definition System with Structure Scan add-on option. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. And by Evan Root E-Tech. With three years, no maintenance. Spend more time on the water. You don't have to fish like a pro to win like a pro. Make sure you log on to FantasyFishing.com for your chance to win up to $50,000 in cash and prizes. It's the final day of competition here at Fort Loudon Teleco Lakes. A storm front moved in from the southwest at the start of the afternoon, bringing overcast skies and the threat of heavy rains. Glenn Brown, who started the day in the lead, is the only one in the final five with a limit in the live well. Dimiki Pro Brian Thrift needs to catch his fifth before hunting down the big upgrades he needs to retake the lead. I'm having the dangest time getting fish in the boat today. It's just ridiculous. Chad Grigsby started the day in third place and hasn't been able to find a solid pattern all day. 
Fishing a variety of techniques, he's been able to land three keepers, and he's scrambling to fill his limit. I'm using fire line with a liter fluorocarbon, eight pound test. And uh, it works for me. I mean, you can make longer casts with that fire line and seven and a half foot rod and just spin a tackle because they jump like crazy. So that, that stuff's real key to, to getting them in. That's the one. She got me in that stick last time. I'm gonna get this one. They're strong. Yeah! Yes! That's a smallmouth. I sure hope you got that. Look at that. <laughs> Give me some. <laughs> Woo! I'm so glad I came back. <sighs> I lost her the first morning. It was my, would have been my second fish and I never came back that whole day. And every day since then I came back and she's never bit. <sighs> Until it really counts. Two more like that and we're on our way. Yeah, my friend Randy called, called me last night and kept telling me, he says, today is your day. That was what he kept telling me. He says, keep thinking that in your head. And I, I, I think he's right. Ooh. That'll leave a mark. A light rain had started to fall a little before one o'clock, but the forecast was predicting even heavier rains to come. Running out of time, we got to get them in the boat. Number five, please be 14 inches. Oh yeah, we got number five in the boat, finally. Number five, finally, finally, finally. It took us all day, we had a lot of ups. Well, not many ups, mostly downs. But a lot of those. But now we got five, so it's okay. I just thought it quit raining. Sometimes the rain makes them bite, though. There you. I think he'll go. Ah. It took me all day. It took me all day, but I got me five. Yeah, it was raining pretty hard, and I had never really caught them on top water when it's been raining, but I knew I was going to keep throwing the frogs, so I just kept throwing it through the rain. I caught probably one of my best fish during the pouring down rain on the frog. It was under a little tree, and it caught a real little one I had, so. That was a big help. It probably gained me at least a half a pound or close to it. Yay, we told one. It was disappointing all day. I, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I was, you know, had the knot in your stomach. You want to produce for your, for the hometown. You know, it's got a lot of people watching you. So a lot of pressure. There he is. Little guy. Come on. I like it all, but I need you to grow up. I'm 
them in the back of the pocket trying to get big ones. I'm out on the channel. I don't know if I've been in the marine is. I've been. Oh, we just been scrambling around trying to catch a lemon a largemouth, and that hasn't worked out. Looked for a couple hours, couldn't find any new ones. Four. Fifteen. Coming up, the final weigh-in. He has got a five bass limit. And a champion is crowned. <laughs> Heavy thunderstorms made for very tough fishing during the final hours of competition. The rains let up just as it was time for the anglers to head back in. But the weather didn't dampen the fun at the Knoxville Convention Center, where the FLW Outdoor Expo was winding down after two fun-filled days for anglers and fans of all ages. Starting the day in fifth place, Gastonia, North Carolina native Chris Baumgartner is first to the scales. Knowing he needed a big bag to move up, he fished to the very end, catching his limit with just 30 minutes to go. 12 pounds, two ounces, 49.6, our new leader, Chris Bumgardner from Gastonia, North Carolina. Next up is Knoxville Pro Brandon Coulter. He started the day with a three pound lead over Bumgardner, but he wasn't able to maintain the momentum that got him to fourth place. Oh, that's it. Only three. So we have a total of five pounds, 11 ounces. He brings him up to fourth place, but not enough to take over the lead. You're still in the lead, stay put. In third place, coming into the final day, Goodwill Pro Chad Grigsby. He left the dock this morning with no specific pattern in mind. Nevertheless, he's bringing a hefty bag to the scales, even though he only caught four fish. Nowhere in the world got beautiful, big, bad, mean smallmouth like they have here in the Tennessee Valley system. The Tennessee River is this awesome for it. Is that all of them? That's all I got. That's what this river can do right there. And that's that's probably the biggest one I've ever caught in the Tennessee River. 11 pounds, 8 ounces, 11, 8, 55, 13. Chad Grigsby is our new leader. So Grigsby moves into the hot seat as Demiki Pro Brian Thrift steps up to weigh his catch. How many top fives in a row now this year? Uh, this is four in a row. Four in a row, four top fives in a row. I mean, that is smoking. That's smoking. He won our last two event on Lake Norman. If he wins here, he will be the first back-to-back -back winner on tour. That's impressive. He struggled to find the big fish today, but he stuck with his topwater pattern and was the only angler to catch an upgrade. Eight pounds, nine ounces, gives him 55 pounds. Not enough to take over lead, but good enough for second place, Brian. <laughs> Thanks to that five and a half pound smallmouth, Grigsby's four fish were enough to beat Thrift's five bass limit. But will they be enough to take on Glenn Brown's largemouth? He has got a five bass limit The Ranger Pro Glenn Brown. Total weight. 12 pounds even today, 59-13. Glenn Brown is your champion. The primary bait this week was a Gambler 4 inch flipping tube, black neon chartreuse. I used it on 20 pound line, 5 16 ounce weight, and a 5 odd EWG hook. And what I was targeting was lay downs and trees and wood, just any, any kind of wood on the bank, shallow wood. And that's how I caught the majority of them was fishing that. It's, it's been a long battle. You know, I finally won one. I'm excited. I'm just, I'm thrilled to death. I mean, it's, it's been hard and it's been difficult, but man, it's so worth it. Congratulations to Glenn Brown on a hard-fought victory and his first ever FLW Tour win. 
For more information or on the water footage, go to flwoutdoors.com. Get him, get him, get him. Woo! Make sure to tune in right here on Versus Country every week for more bass fishing action. Now, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will.